As mobile network architectures evolve and next-gen core platforms are deployed to support 5G RAN upgrades, are business models changing too? So let's find out from Richard Band, Head of Mobile Core and 5G Communications Technology Group at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So Richard, great to talk to you again. Uh, HPE is very active in the 5G sector and in 5G Core in particular. Can you tell me a bit about your strategy in the core? Maybe before we talk about what we do in the core, let's, let's talk a little bit about how we look at the 5G uh, market and the needs of our customers. Um, in my mind, there are two things that are driving our strategy. First of all, the nature of the 5G network by itself. I think 5G as a technology is quite different from previous one, and the expectation is that 5G will be pervasive throughout society and will transform sectors that have so far been little or not uh, attached by the um, digitization of, of other industries. Um, that has consequences to how we monetize 5G. So in my mind, in our minds, um, in order to monetize 5G, we will have to adapt the network to specific industry verticals. And to do so, we will have to work with specialists of those ind industry verticals to co-create solutions. And that requires us to work at a different pace and a different way than we have done before. Opening up the ecosystem, speeding up innovation, being able to try things, test them out very quickly, see if they work, if they work, scale up, if not, try again. Um, and at that point in time, you know, if things work, we have to scale up significantly and that requires a significant amount of automation. So. The co-creation piece is key because it drives us to a speed of innovation and a degree of automation that was not required previously in, in networks. The other element is the nature of the technology itself. The technology has been evolving and what we are seeing clearly is a disaggregation of the network. We're seeing a separation, I would say vertically, between infrastructure, middleware and applications, but also the applications themselves are actually being decomposed into smaller blocks from a standardization perspective. So we have about 20 network functions now in uh, in release 16. But even the implementation themselves, with the adoption of cloud native, we see microservices, we see containers. So we have many more elements in the network to be, to be put together in order to deliver 5G core. Now, disaggregation means somebody needs to do the integration to deliver the end service. Some of our customers are very comfortable doing that. Others require some help. So what do we do then from an HP perspective? Well, first up, back to the innovation automation, we have decided to radically change the implementation of our core network functions. We have been in core networks since more than 30 years, doing 2G, 3G, 4G, IMS, etc. And we have always evolved our software from physical to virtual. But when we looked at 5G and we looked at the container approach, and the cloud native principles, we said, you know what, this is time to do a clean sheet. This is time to make a radical step to make telecommunications less special and adopt more IT tools and technologies. And this is exactly what we've done. So we've implemented an, an open cloud native approach where we try to leverage as much as possible existing technologies, especially from the open source community. And we're working very closely with our partner Red Hat uh, to leverage the OpenShift capabilities. Then um, back to the integration challenge. So previously, we as a company have provided a best of breed solutions. Um, so we did uh, HLR, HSS, as I just mentioned, policy and charging, IN solutions. But we tended to focus on specific areas where we felt that we could make a contribution. With 5G, um, as I said, we, there's a clear need for more integration. And we've decided to step up to that challenge and we launched last year our 5G core stack. So our 5G core stack is really aimed at providing end-to-end -end integration top to bottom. So from the infrastructure all the way up to the application, but also across the different network functions, working with partners that have a similar approach to us in terms of adoption of cloud native to provide a, a pre-integrated end-to-end 5G core. In that way, we aim to reduce the risk of our customers at the technical level. And at the same time, at the commercial level, we're introducing what we call the consumption-based pricing to also mitigate the commercial risk of the introduction of 5G. 
So in a nutshell, this is how we approach the, the solution for, for 5G. So a different cloud native architecture, a end-to-end -end integration to reduce technical risk and a consumption-based pricing to reduce commercial risk. This consumption-based pricing, this is particularly interesting. Can you tell us a little bit more about this pricing model and approach? Certainly. So, uh, well, it comes from a couple of a uh, couple of things. So, first of all, as a company, we have made a, a pledge to make available all of our offers by 2022 on a consumption-based or as a service model. Okay. So, first of all, there's this corporate initiative that we are very happy to follow. Then, I think from a, a customer perspective, from an industry perspective. I do believe that consumption is making a lot of sense specifically for 5G. It makes a lot of sense for two reasons. One is um, at this point in time, 5G is still a new technology. We know it's going to happen, but we don't know necessarily how quickly it's going to materialize. So there's a timing risk. And again, our aim is to help customers meet and manage their risks. And this is a risk that we're very happy to carry for them. So, Allowing you know, using consumption allows them to scale up the capacity they need and pay for the capacity they need only when the demand is materializing. And in a certain in phase of an uncertain demand, I think this is creating value for our customers. There's a second reason, which is linked again to the monetization of uh, of 5G. I do believe that 5G is going to be monetized primarily through enterprise. And typically, when we discuss with the enterprise side of uh, of operators they tend to have a, a, a desire to have a much stronger alignment between cost and revenue than we know historically in the, in the mass market. In the mass market, we're quite comfortable as an industry to invest into a network and then see how we, how we monetize and how, things, uh, how customers are coming. On the enterprise, I see a much stronger desire to align specifically the cost and the revenue. And again, consumption allows to do that. You pay on a monthly basis per uh, subscriber, per size type and that is very closely related of course to the revenue that an operator makes with the the enterprise customers so for those two reasons i believe it makes sense in 5g to apply consumption-based pricing so we see the mindset of the of the industry shifting uh, we see more and more uh, interest by operators in exploring partnerships with uh, with public cloud providers and so i think the, the time is right to think a little bit differently about how we do business in telecoms and consumption in my mind has a, has a place here in this, uh, in this movement. Absolutely, and it's just another example of greater flexibility in the industry. Now, HPE is also known for its focus on automation. How does your 5G core stack bring automation to mobile operators? Yeah, automation is clearly at the heart of, uh, of what we're doing. We firmly believe that in order to be successful in a, in a much more dynamic and complex world than, than the one that we've had in the previous generations, automation is key. And automation is not just about reducing cost. Of course, it's a way to contain cost in the face of this complexity, but it's also about speed of execution. You know, I talked about innovation. Innovation, faster innovation without automation is not going to be possible. And about reducing errors when we actually deliver the service to the customer. So the, the reasons for doing automation, I think, are, are very compelling. Then how do you do it? Um, we distinguish three elements. One is in the kind of uh, initial, I would say, more of the engineering side of the house. So in the test and validation here. We are big believers and, and we've adopted very extensively the use of CICD. CICD, so continuous integration, continuous deployment, helps us to automate the test cases, helps us validate that a solution is working well in a customer environment, and then allows us to automate the deployment of that solution. As a practical example, we're capable of deploying a full 5G core in less than one hour with our 5G core stack. So this is clearly a very important element, and it gives us the foundation for then subsequent automation in operations. Because we have automated deployment, we know exactly what has been deployed. We have a full record of what has been done. And we then use that in, on the one hand, orchestration. Orchestration is here being adapted to do slice management in particular. So designing slices, instantiating slices, scaling slices, all of that needs to be automated and here's where we use our orchestration suite 
And then, of course, you know, whatever has been instantiated needs to be monitored, and we need to be able to take corrective actions if something goes wrong. And this is where the assurance comes into play. And what we see here is, again, because of the complexity of the network, because of the dynamicity of the network, it's very important to, to do the automate, yeah, the assurance piece is slightly different as well. And in particular, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning is a key element of our strategy here to, to help the operator to, to stay on top of that complexity, initiate automated actions in pretty much real time when necessary. So for instance, if a network slice is showing a degradation of quality of service, you don't want necessarily for that to come to the operator before you take action. You can define certain rules that will act immediately in a short loop. And then you define, you know, you have a longer loop where you analyze the results over a longer term period of time and eventually define new rules that can be applied directly into the network. So those three elements, the CICD, orchestration, particularly around slice, slice management, and then closing the loop with assurance for us are critical to building a, an end-to-end -end automation uh, in the 5G core. Well, this all sounds like it is hitting the, the sweet spot for mobile operators. So how is HPE doing in the market? Where are you seeing the most traction? Right. So I think um, in the past 12 months, something quite interesting has happened. So we've continued to see the, the I would say, the different waves of uh, adoption in, in public continue. So obviously, the first countries that made decisions were countries like China, Japan, Korea, North America. We were anticipating this year to be the year of decisions in Europe, and that's exactly what we're seeing. And we're expecting other parts of the world to, to get more serious about making their decisions next year. But the piece that I found very interesting is, in fact, what, we, what has changed compared to what we were anticipating a year ago is really on the private side. The private networking has uh, moved ahead much faster than expected. We clearly see decision timelines being quite short. And we're also seeing, I would say, um, probably because there's not the burden of having to do the interoperability with the 4G, we're seeing the private side adopting new um, technologies much faster. So we see much more desire to go fast with uh, URLCC in the enterprise. We see network slicing coming to the fore. It's materializing in different places. So we have customers, for instance, in Japan, where, where it's much more focused on the manufacturing industry. We have uh, a lot of traction at the moment in North America with the defense side. And I see interest from other parts of the world to look at dedicated uh, private networking infrastructure for security forces. Um, but for, quite frankly, we're, we're seeing the demand materializing across different industries um, and very, very clearly private networking is accelerating in a, in a very substantial way, uh, which is great for us because honestly being, being challengers in this market and we have to be, be cognizant of that, um, an industry that is willing to experiment, which is less burdened with the, the, um, the legacy uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, it clearly is an opportunity for us to, to play and to, to make uh, fast progress in that, in that market. So that's kind of what we're seeing at the moment. I hope it's, uh, it's of use to, to the audience. Um, and thank you, Ray, for, for your different questions. So really interesting trends and insights there. Richard, great to talk with you as ever. Thanks very much for your time today. Mm -hmm.